I have seen shit that will turn you white. So says Winston Zedmore in Ghostbusters. That illustrates the point for today. These things are real. The gods are real. The undead are real. Devils, demons, angels are all real in your fantasy game. They exist. They have an effect on the world. They're not some unknowable quantity that people are just going to not understand. They're known, and people have ways of dealing with it. Take undead, for example. Undead rise from the grave, or arisen from the grave, by foul necromancers or evil magics. So why the hell does anyone bury anybody in a fantasy universe? Why would you do that? There's a non-zero chance that some necromancer is going to come along and raise up poor old Aunt Edna and as a zombie, as a skeleton, and then send her a run dead ass after you. So why would you ever take that risk? Cremation is probably the most common form of dealing with the dead in the fantasy universe. Unless there is some other mystical reason why you need buried remains. I mean, why? <laughs> I mean, unless you want to support the undead legions, you know, I can see why a nation ruled by necromancers and evil beings, they would insist that you bury your loved ones so that they have troops for when the good guys come calling. And it might be considered a holy and blessed thing to become an undead warrior in such a twisted and lunatic society. But other than that, why would you bury your granny if you know she'd come back and eat your brain? You wouldn't. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. The gods are real. If your fantasy game is like most others and it imitates some sort of mythic fantasy Europe, then you've probably got analogues of Greek or Roman or Norse or Celtic gods running around. And they should be running around. The goddess of love and beauty should cavort through the streets on her holy day, inducing everyone into a mass frenzy of shagging. The, the bloody-handed god of battles, of war, should stalk battlefields, being on one, first being on one side and then the other, as the mood fits him, as he sees fit, as he wants to. He will join in a fight just for the fun, sheer fun of it. And presumably he may influence the battle one way or the other, and this might be based on him being on the side of the big battalions or... Or not. He might like the underdog. He might want the battle to go on further to inflict more casualties. Wars could be very bloody things when there's a god of war around who just wants well, slaughter. You know, the god of craftsmen should appear on high holidays of the masons or the builders or carpenters and probably a fish at those events. The god of thieves could be the capo de capo. The head honcho of every thieves gang, every organization, every shadow brotherhood. And he or she gets a cut of everything. The god of thieves should demand their 10%. That should be a known thing. So the guards should come down. They should play out their little morality dramas for all to see. Just like in the Greek myths, you know, Hermes, Apollo... Minerva, they all came down, played with mortals, like they were merely toys. So they should have that happen. A god coming down and manifesting an avatar should not be an unknown occurrence. They often will disguise themselves as mortals to further fuck with us, but as is their want, but it shouldn't be unknown. It shouldn't be this totally out-of-the-way thing. And then we get to devils and demons. They're real. What are they? Why are they there? Are they are demons just some result of some terrible wound in reality and they just pour out into the universe causing havoc and destruction? And when they get into the mortal realm, they just continue this devastation around them? So are there known ways to hold a devil, a demon at bay, a devil? And would a ring of salt work? Can they not cross it? And so every, every night... Perhaps villagers will put out a ring of salt around their village to keep out the demons. Just on the off chance that, you know, that one day the demon does come across their village, it can't get in. And, you know, you can introduce this to players. They 
the village always sets out a little ring of salt round the habitation. This is something everyone who can afford to do it does. And you might be required to guard that ring of salt, to protect it, to make sure that no fool <laughs> disturbs it. Because you know that if the PCs are there and the salt gets disturbed, a demon is coming in. I mean, that's how stories work. They go to all that trouble of guarding and it gets disturbed and nothing happens. Why are you there? Why are the PCs there? Why are you focusing on this? So, demons are real. And devils. Devils are a separate thing from demons, not always, but sometimes they are. They are fallen angels. Well, what did they fall from? What are they rebelling against? Because they're probably not. Satan and his merry band followers. They have some analog, but why are they fallen angels? What did they fall from? What cosmic order they dissipated? They do de devils think this entire great wheel cosmology, this entire alignment chamber is bullshit? And it is. But maybe they they agree with you. They're, this is stupid. That you know there is designated good, there is designated evil, and they're rebelling against that. And okay, they're bad types and they're nasty types. They want to overthrow the universe and remake it something truly horrible. Because let's face it, they are not nice people. They are rebelling against the system. So that could be what devils are. They are rebels. Very nasty rebels. But not all rebels are nice. So that's just a few thoughts on things being real. Have real gods. Have real demons. Have real undead. They're real. And they probably out to get you. Thank you for watching.